Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Leviticus 13 and Matthew 26, 26 through 50. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your Word will be smooth and accurate, so that it will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Regulations about defiling skin diseases. Leviticus 13. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When anyone has a swelling or a rash or a shiny spot on their skin that may be a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons, who is a priest. The priest is to examine the sore on the skin, and if the hair in the sore has turned white, and the sore appears to be more than skin deep, it is a defiling skin disease, and when the priest examines that person, he shall pronounce them ceremonially unclean. If the shiny spot on the skin is white but does not appear to be more than skin deep, and the hair in it has not turned white, the priest is to isolate the affected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine them, and if he sees that the sore is unchanged and has not spread in the skin, he is to isolate them for another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine them again, and if the sore has faded and he and has not spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them clean. It is only a rash. They must wash their clothes, and they will be clean. But if the rash does spread in their skin, after they have shown themselves to the priest to be pronounced clean, they must appear before the priest again. And the priest is to examine that person. And if the rash has spread in the skin, he shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. When anyone has a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to the priest. The priest is to examine them, and if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and if there is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic skin disease, and the priest shall pronounce them unclean. He is not to isolate them because they are already unclean. If the disease breaks out all over their skin, and so far as the priest can see, it covers all the skin of the affected person from head to foot, the priest is to examine them. And if the disease has covered their whole body, he shall pronounce them clean. Since it has all turned white, they are clean. But whenever raw flesh appears on them, they will be unclean. When the priest sees the raw flesh, he shall pronounce them unclean. The raw flesh is unclean. They have a defiling skin disease. And if the raw flesh changes and turns white, they must go to the priest. The priest is to examine them, and if the sores have turned white, the priest shall pronounce the affected person clean. Then they will be clean. When someone has a boil on their skin, and it heals, and in its place where the boil was, a white swelling or reddish white spot appears, they must present themselves to the priest. The priest is to examine it, and if it appears to be more than skin deep, and their hair in it has turned white, the priest shall pronounce that person unclean. It is a defiling skin disease that has broken out where the boil was. But if when the priest examines it, there is no white hair in it, and it is not more than skin deep, and has faded, then the priest is to isolate them for seven days. If it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall 
pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. But if the spot is unchanged and has not spread, it is only a scar from the boil, and the priest shall pronounce them clean. When someone has a burn on their skin and a reddish white or white spot appears in the raw flesh of the burn, the priest is to examine the spot, and if the hair in it has turned white and it appears to be more than skin deep, it is a defiling disease that has broken out in the burn. The priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. But if the priest examines it and there is no white hair in the spot, and it is not more than skin deep and has faded, then the priest is to isolate them for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine that person, and if it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. If, however, the spot is unchanged and has not spread in the skin but has faded, it is a swelling from the burn, and the priest shall pronounce them clean. It is only a scar from the burn. If a man or woman has a sore on their head or chin, the priest is to examine the sore, and if it appears to be more than skin deep and the hair in it is yellow, and then the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease on the head or chin. But when the priest examines the sore and if does not seem to be more than skin deep and there is no black hair in it, then the priest is to isolate the affected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore, and if it has not spread, and there is no yellow hair in it, and it does not appear to be more than skin deep, then the man or woman must shave themselves, except for the affected area, and the priest is to keep them isolated another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore, and if it has not spread in the skin and appears to be no more than skin deep, the priest shall pronounce them clean. They must wash their clothes, and they will be clean. But if the sore does spread in the skin after they are pronounced clean, the priest is to examine them, and if he finds that the sore has spread in the skin. He does not need to look for yellow hair. They are unclean. If, however, the sore is unchanged so far as the priest can see, and if black hair has grown in it, the affected person is healed, and they are clean. And the priest shall pronounce them clean. When a man or a woman has a white spot on the skin, the priest is to examine them, and if the spots are dull, white, it is a harmless rash that has broken out on the skin. They are clean. A man who has lost his hair and is bald is clean. If he has lost his hair from the front of his scalp and has a bald forehead, he is clean. But if he has a reddish white sore on his bald head or forehead, it is a defiling skin disease breaking out on his head or forehead. The priest is to examine him, and if the swollen sore on his head or forehead is reddish white like a defiling skin disease, the main man is deceased. deceased and is unclean, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean because of the sore on his head. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let the, their hair be unkept, cover the lower part of their face, and carry 
cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone, and they must live outside the camp. Regulations about defiling molds. As per any fabric that is spoiled with a defiling mold, any woolen or linen cloth, any woven or knitted material of linen, linen or wool, any leather or anything made of leather. If the affected area in the fabric, the leather, eh, the woven or knitted material, or any leather article is greenish or reddish, it is a defiling mold and must be shown to the priest. The priest is to examine the affected area and isolate the article for seven days. On the seventh day, he is to examine it, and if the mold has spread in the fabric, the woven or knitted material, or the leather, whatever it is used, it is a persistent defiling mold, and the article is unclean. He must burn the fabric, the wool, the woven or knitted material of wool or linen, or any leather article that has been spoiled, because the defiling mold is persistent and the article must be burned. But if when the priest examines it and the mold has not spread in the fabric, the woven or knitted material, or the leather article, he shall order that the spoiled article be washed. Then he is to isolate it for another seven days. And after the article has been washed, the priest is to examine it again. And if the mold has not changed, it appears in its appearance, even though it has not spread, it is unclean. Burn it, no matter which side the fabric has been uh, spoiled. If, when the priest examines it, the mold has faded after the article has been washed, he is to tear the spot apart out of the fabric, the leather or woven or knitted material. But if it appears in the fabric, it in the woven or knitted material, or in the leather article, it is a spreading mold. Whatever has the mold must be burned. Any fabric woven or knitted material or any leather article that has been washed and is red or rid of the mold must be washed again. Then it will be clean. These are the regulations concerning defiling molds in woolen or linen clothing worn or knitted material or any leather article for pronouncing them clean or unclean. That was Leviticus 13. Now we will be turning to Matthew 26, 26. Matthew 26, 26. Here we go. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, and this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many and for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away an account of me for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all 
fall away on account of you? I will never will. And truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, May your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. And so he left them and went away once more, and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, and let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus arrested. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him, was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer has arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once Jesus, to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and he and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the man stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. And that was... Matthew twenty six twenty six through fifty, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe twenty twenty two for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Leviticus fourteen and Matthew twenty six fifty one through seventy five. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. I give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said. Amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe, your messenger of the word of God, saying, God bless you. And as always, you know God loves you and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow because God will and will be here. And we hope that you are.